You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Amy Ressler, County Extension Agent for Family and Community Health here in Montgomery County. And this is the Extension Hour. We talk about our people, our programs, our partners. And we have Michael Potter with us today, who is our County Extension Agent for Horticulture here in Montgomery County. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good. So last time you were here um, was right after storm, trop- not trop, I was going to say tropical, tropical storm. storm. Yeah, it was a storm. Winter storm, Yuri. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, that was a, a, an event. It was quite an event, <laughs> and, and a we're lot, still talking about it. Yeah, we're still talking, yeah, and a lot, well, it's funny, we talk about it, but a lot of people forget about it. Right. So we have been getting a ton of questions on trees. Um, trees, you know, they grow slowly, so it takes some time sometimes to show symptoms, and sometimes those symptoms just carry on for a long period of time. So a lot of people are saying, you know, is this a trash tree? Do I get rid of it? Uh, what we're you know, really telling people is just wait. Let's, you know, make sure they're watered, um, you know, make sure they're taken care of at this point in time. And at some point in time, we're going to realize hmm, maybe in the spring, next spring, uh, when they start to relief back out that, yeah, there may still be some dead branches, but the tree still looks good, has a good canopy. And, and, and you know, as long as they're I guess coming like when they start to leaf out that they all leaf out at the same time as other trees if they're late and they're like straggling behind then that's maybe a tree that might be severely damaged and um, you know the freeze it, it it's kind of like a straw if you take a straw of water and you seal both ends and put it in the the in the freezer eventually what happens is that water expands so the straw breaks and that's what happens inside of a tree so it can disrupt a lot of the movement of nutrients and water to the tree to make it healthy uh, so we kind of have to wait and see what happens to them and then when we get to that spring time frame we'll be able to trim out the dead wood and things like that and hopefully the trees will be okay okay so let me make sure that i understand you right because when we were talking in february like right after the storm mm-hmm. the advice was just wait and see so yes. you're still saying Same. Yes. Wait and see. Yes. Like, we can't expect them to just come back in the summer because right. it's 100 degrees outside. It, ex- we've gotten lots of rain and yeah, all that, right? So. Yeah, and that, that's that's the water has been kind of weird because we've gotten yeah. a lot of rain. It's been excessive, so soils are nat- naturally, when you have that much rainfall, you get lack of oxygen, which plants need oxygen in the root system. A lot of people don't realize that. But then all of a sudden we get hot and dry. So mm. roots can be tender and so they can get burnt so a lot of trees will show symptoms real quick about oh (laughs) you have done burned my root system so i'm going to start kind of dying out in the limbs and branches um so that's part of what's going on yeah we're telling people can kind of wait and see especially with those trees that still have some green to them if they like some of the live oaks or some of the oak trees have branching that you'll see up and down the branch all the way three-fourths of the branch will be green and look good and the last portion of it will be dead or not have any leaves mm-hmm. on it. So we're telling people just to wait and next spring when it, they come out and hopefully they'll be back to normal. Okay, so that, and that's for trees. Is mm-hmm. it different? Cause last time when you were here, we also talked about other types of landscape, yes. shrubbery and that kind of thing that are smaller. Are mm-hmm. we doing the same thing with those? We're still gonna wait till next spring or? Yes, yeah, so in, in some cases, okay. A lot of the cases we had things just died. And there was no rhyme or reason why they died and why the one next to it lived. Mm-hmm. So especially with your shrubs and your, some of your perennials. Um, so if a perennial is still green and it still looks like a shrub and it's doing good, then just leave it alone. It'll be fine. Just make sure it stays watered. Um, there are some scenarios and cases where, you know, if the tree didn't die fully, it started to come back from the base. People are getting excited. Uh, and what happened eventually, all of a sudden the whole plant just dies. Mm-hmm. You think it's going to survive, but then it doesn't. And, and the reason for that is the whole xylem and phloem, the inside of that straw, has been disrupted and bursted on the inside. So it's not able to pull up that water and and that nutrient to make it survive. So sometimes you'll have that happen and you'll still have cases where it's growing from the bottom and it looks fine, but then when it gets really stressed out, it will stop growing or it'll die back. So we just wanna watch those things if they're willing to watch them. Sometimes the pocketbook tells us to wait, Mm -hmm. you know, because we don't wanna spend so much on plants or anything else. So waiting may be a good game right now. Okay. I've got this like bush that was a bush. It was like a um, related to the rosemary plant. So it okay. smelled a little bit like rosemary, but it wasn't rosemary, right? And it had like little 
little red fluffy kind of blossom <laughs> things <laughs> anyway blossom. Okay. that was kind of in the middle of my yard mm-hmm. and i'm pretty sure it's dead because it's not showing anything now but the shrubbery that's closer to the house is like overgrowing now mm-hmm. and i'm like how did you why are you doing that but so the that, one that, that i think is dead is it dead yeah okay yeah <laughs> that'll be more than like i think that what mm-hmm. that is is i think that's a little johnny bottle brush okay. is what that is but yeah the ones closer to the house and sometimes the reason why they survived and the ones outside didn't is because your house was emitting heat mm-hmm. so sometimes the root system and right around that that foundation you were emitting heat and so they, they had a little bit better chance to survive. So All right. So some things, if you're pretty sure it's dead, go ahead and yeah, go if ahead and you can do out, something. You okay. Yeah. But trees, we're going to wait. Yeah. We'll keep waiting. Mm-hmm. Keep waiting on them. If you see like a fungus or things growing out the side of a tree, mm-hmm. you know, consult us. Call our extension office, you know, uh, 936-539-7822. And that way, uh, we can answer your questions. Send mm-hmm. us photos through email at uh, mcmga9020 at gmail.com. And that way, we can look and evaluate because there are certain things like today, I saw a picture of a red maple and it had these little, like we call them conches, and they're mm-hmm. just big mushrooms all that come out the side of the tree. And it's halfway up the tree. Well, that's a sign of decay on the inside of the tree. Uh. So even though the tree kind of looks healthy, it's still a part of the decaying process. So what do you do with those? Uh, in that case, if it's just one branch and you can afford to lose one branch of that tree, then you can cut it off. Uh, but if it's a very large or main portion of the tree, then more than likely that tree's going to die. And the last thing we want, we don't want, well, the last thing, what we don't want to happen, we don't want that tree to die, die and then fall on somebody's house or on somebody's car mm. or property, fence line, whatever it may be, or somebody walking down the street. So we want to protect, you know, people... Uh, our people uh, and our places and our things. So we need to make sure that we don't, you know, if a tree is in that much danger, uh, being a danger or a hazard tree is what we like to call it, uh, then we want to remove it. Okay. And and we are doing this show right now in the middle of August. So mm-hmm. this is not really a good time to be pruning anyway, right? Uh, yeah, it? it's it's not a good time okay. to be pruning. Uh, everything's stressed out right now because of lack of rainfall. Mm-hmm. Um, even though we had, in some areas, we've had some recent rainfall, but there was a couple, like a, almost a month there where we didn't have any rainfall at all. So uh, things are stressed. You don't want to add to it at this point in time. Uh, best thing to do is just wait. Even if it's ugly. Yeah. It looks a little weird. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. Give it some time. Brown's a color too. (laughs) You know, it's all right. (laughs) All right. So you were also telling me that there are some other um, issues with trees. Mm -hmm. So oak leaf skeletonizer. Yes. Yeah. There's (laughs) a scary. It is. Yeah. Skeletonizer. (laughs) Halloween ish. Yeah. It's Halloween ish. Yes. Um, And oak leaf skeletonizer, what it is, is it's a little uh, worm basically that comes in and feeds in between the veins of the leaf. So you can have a dark green leaf that all of a sudden looks like transparent Mm. when you look at it from above. Uh, And it'll actually make it look like the whole tree is dying. Uh, Several of the the calls that we've gotten in and with some of our master gardeners even, they're typically on the white oaks right now. Um, So you'll sit there and walk up and you'll think the tree's dead or dying. But once you see that they're the... I mean, they look like paper is what the leaves, mm-hmm. you can see right through them like a clear, clear paper. So once you see that, then you'll notice what it is. It's not detrimental as far as would kill the tree. Yeah, it kind of harms it in such a way, but we've still got time where it may even put on a new growth spurt uh, here in the fall. Uh, if not, it, it still won't damage or kill the tree at that point. But it's just a little insect that's kind of mm-hmm. causing some concern around the county. So, so kind of like what we were just saying, if it may be mm-hmm. dead or potentially infected, we just want to leave it alone mm-hmm. right now and yeah. um, maybe address it later. Address it later. But again... If folks have questions, they yes. can send them in because, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, better to, better to ask questions. Yeah, better be than safe to, than sorry. Yeah. Sometimes we run into <laughs> things where people say, oh, I've got this certain type of tree. I know it's an oak. And we've looked at the picture and go, oh, that's not an oak. Mm. <laughs> that's an ash tree or an elm tree or something like that. So we got to look at those types of things. Okay. And then webworms is another thing that's creating yes. some strange land Halloween looking stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's a little at the end of some of the branches, you'll have this webbing that's just kind of like there. And basically what happens is these fall webworms, they get on there and they create the webbing around like the end branches Mm -hmm. where there's leaves. And so what they do is they like to get in there and eat the leaves. So creating the webbing is a protection for them. 
So they get in there. You can't really spray water like softly on them because you can't get to them because it's got to break through those that webbing. Uh, sometimes if you have smaller trees, you can actually use you know a broom or something and break the webbing, and that'll allow birds to come in and also uh, hornets and other things like that um, to come in and feed on the worms. That way they don't you know take the whole tree. Now in the same case with like oak leaf skeletonizer with the fall web worms. It's not going to kill the tree. It's just unsightly. It looks like it has a little broom tip at the top or something like that. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, there are ways to control it. Breaking the webbing. Also, you can use like BT, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a which is a soil-borne bacteria, which is really safe uh, for the environment. Uh, the problem is that with it is is you have to reapply it every one or two days. And the problem with that is sometimes that the tree is just really too high to do that or the portions that you're trying to create, uh, trying to spray. And then also spinosad is another one. Um, there's other ones like um, carbarils, uh, let's see, delta methrin, permethrin, lambda cyhalothrin, ensvin valerate, or some of the ones that have, those are the active ingredients, people. I, I can't say yeah, I recommend this certain product. Mm-hmm. I have to say what the active ingredient is. Uh, in these products and so basically what you do you know make sure that you read the label make sure you spray it according to the label don't drink it swallow it bathe in it or anything like that and you'll be okay (laughs) but that's the best thing with the the, these chemicals Um, but yeah you have to break the outer layer that webbing and that'll allow at least some of the natural pests to come in and birds and, and 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 hornets and things like that to come in and eat them or you can spray them, but you still have to break that webbing okay. on those. T- t- now, tell me more about the application process of, of these things, because you see, so you say a soil bacteria, and I'm thinking something in the ground, and it's, it you're going to like mix it and <laughs> spray it, but yeah. not bathe in it. So BT <laughs> was something that was discovered in soil, mm-hmm. and what they what they found, it, it's a bacteria, mm-hmm. and it was a st- discovered at a, a, at a factory, I want to say a bourbon factory or something like that. Anyway, you know, hey, so... They harvested it, and what they found out is that when ingested by an insect, a worm specifically, when injected by an insect, it basically gives them heartburn they'll never forget because mm. it just it kills, it disrupts their whole feeding mechanism and everything, and so they die. Um, the problem is UV light breaks it down, um, and rainfall washes it off, so it has to be reapplied constantly, so it's a little bit more time-consuming. Um, but from that standpoint, the BT is kind of a passive way. It doesn't hurt other, in, like if a bird eats a worm that has BT, it's not going to hurt the bird, those types of things. Um, so the process typically is they, it comes in a concentrate, so you have to have a applicator. Um, typically, there are several different types. There's, there's one that has a canister on the bottom of it. You put your product in it, and then you screw it back on. You attach it to the hose, and you can spray it. They have one of those for shrubs, and they have one of those for trees that'll spray like up to 30 feet in the air. Uh, so there's several different ways to apply it. Um, there's also systemic insecticides that you can apply to the root system that are absorbed through the tree, and when something eats it, it dies. That's kind of another passive way to do it, mm-hmm. but that's much more of a, pro- a chemical product. Um, it, it's a little safer, I guess, from a standpoint of how it's delivered to the insects. Um, but the whole thing is, is always read the label Always make sure you're not drinking it, swallowing it, bathing in it, swimming in it, and we're good at, you know, mm-hmm. uh, those types of things. Make sure you're not spraying on windy days where it's blowing down into your neighbor's yard and stuff. There's nothing like having squabbles with that. So I've actually been in the backyard one time with somebody spraying their tree, and it's, you know, misting and coming all over me. You know? <laughs> and you're it's not like, supposed to yeah. bathe in it. I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> hello, you know, thank yeah. you. Well, and I've heard of BT being used for a lot of different things. So we were talking about mm-hmm. it in terms of it, treating webworms, mm-hmm. but it's used for other types of issues as well correct um yeah they they do use it for other things but worms are the main com- could deal it's it's okay. just that's really kind of a targeted uh any kind of chewing leaf chewing type insect is really what that's targeted for okay so we've had lots of good conversation about trees mm-hmm. um we want to also move on to talking about lawns but we're gonna take a break mm-hmm. um and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about lawns and we'll talk about water and mm-hmm. other kinds of just current trends and agriculture because yeah. we have the expert with us <laughs> michael potter our horticulture agent at texas a&m agri-life extension service this is the extension hour we talk about our people our programs our partnerships and we'll be back right after this
From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi-level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well-being for everyone, addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science-based information. Extension programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. Have a legal question? Are you a resident of Montgomery County? Call 281-645-6344 to talk to a volunteer attorney from the Woodlands Bar Association. We answer the phones on the first Monday of every month at 281-645-6344 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. to provide general legal information and information about legal resources to Montgomery County residents. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. This is the Extension Hour. I'm Amy Ressler. I've got Michael Potter with me. We are at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service here in Montgomery County. Um, and we had mentioned phone numbers and email addresses before um, we went to break, or kind of like in the middle of the last segment. Yeah. But just uh, to reiterate, if you've got questions, um, we've got a lot of resources, so mm -hmm. we're fine with people calling. We've got some wonderful master gardener volunteers mm -hmm. who man the phones we call it the mm -hmm. phone, phone room and, and yeah, help they <laughs> answer help all them. kinds of questions um yeah. people come in or call and those kinds of things so um and we sometimes we give different numbers yes. so the one i always give is 936-539-7825 it always rings at the same place yeah. so it can be 2422 two, two. <laughs> so we got it and then and then you said and what happens often because people call right and they're mm -hmm. trying to describe this and mm -hmm. you know a picture is worth a thousand words, right, literally. Right. So you can also email a picture of it. Yes. To mcmga nine zero two zero at gmail dot com. Right, and then they've got a great website, mm -hmm. Facebook page. Yeah. Montgomery County Master Gardeners. Right, and there's a cool way. A lot of people call and they say, "Well, how would I find that information?" Mm -hmm. And and we know in extension sometimes information's everywhere. Right. But the best thing to do, if you know, go to your computer if you want to look up, let's say, army worms. If you go in there, you can type in army worms, and at the end of it, type in a dot t a m u mm. for Texas A and M University. Mm -hmm. It will actually pop up publications from out of Texas A and M University which is all research-based scientific information that has all the life cycle of the insect and everything. So it's good publications, and you can do that for just about any topic. Mm -hmm. So having that .tamu.edu on the end of it really helps. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, like you said, having that research-based information, mm -hmm. too, is helpful because we're, we're not – we don't sell anything, mm -hmm. and none of the A&M websites – Sell Cells. anything, and yeah. um, you were you were saying a lot of big complicated words earlier <laughs> um, with chemicals of things that can be used right. without saying brand names right. because we don't really endorse any kind of brand names. Yeah, if and I, I can make the statement that Ortho, um, Miracle Grow. I mean, I can uh, let's say Green things Light. Like, you know, all these. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of chemicals companies out there that are making these chemicals. Uh, some if you have let's for for instance um, by Fenthrin. Bifenthrin can be made by every single chemical company. It's just under a different name or it has a blue bottle instead of a green bottle. And one has a green bottle and one has a yellow bottle. So the active ingredient is the most important aspect of how you control those insects. All right. So mm -hmm. we talked about um, trees earlier. We talked about the oak leaf skeletonizer mm -hmm. and we talked about mm -hmm. webworms and ways to treat those. Mm -hmm. um, but lawns is another question that you get a lot like yeah. why is this so, <laughs> why is this growing and this is not this is green and this is brown like what, what's mm. going on with my lawn yeah uh, there's a lot of yeah uh, we're still seeing the effects of your yeah no, even, to in say. Grass. Right, even in grass right even in grass yes um and not only that we're seeing the effects of too much rain uh. Uh, and I, it's i know it's like it's <laughs> too like, much not enough <laughs> what do you want you know, what's next yeah, yeah. exactly what when's a, a good amount please stop mm -hmm. um but the whole thing is is that you know at one inch of water per week 
that's what a home lawn needs during the growing season. And I was, I was real fortunate this morning. I went through with a, a gentleman that came in and I was drawing a little chart and I said, OK, so, you know, when the growing season is and he just kind of looked at me blankly and I was like, OK, good, because that's what we need to teach you. Monday, I mean, Monday, May 1st, basically through about mid-October or early October is the growing season. It works out to be about 24 weeks. And that's around our that's a- around general our area, area right. right? So it, if you're yeah. in a different part of the country or a different part of the yeah. state, it could be a could little be different. A little different, yeah. Okay. But typically that's our growing, yeah, well, when it's down in Corpus, it's like December to December, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. depending on the year, you know. Right. Uh, we tend to have those types of years down there. But here it's May through October, you May said. May through October, okay. that's the growing season. And we we like to tell people, you know, make sure that you're doing certain things at certain times. And we'll get a little bit more like into the, the management, but for the most part right now, we're kind of suffering from too much water, mm-hmm. whether it be <laughs> the homeowner did it or <laughs> Mother Nature did. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it's just, it's just too much water. Uh, soils get you know, get to the point where they're just they don't they lack the oxygen, so roots starve. The grass just feels comfortable right at the first inch and a half because it's raining every other day. We haven't had a chance to wean it off and get that root system, you know, eight to ten inches deep. Um, so that's one of the things we're really, really dealing with right now. People are, you know, it got hot and all of a sudden the lawn started to burn up. And it, and it happened a couple of years ago. I was actually meeting with uh, one of the nursery owners in the area. He called me up and he said, look, we got real big problems here. Come on, go take a drive with me. And I was like, sure. And we were driving down the street and I was looking and he goes, aren't you concerned? I said, no. I said, it's, it's normal. Why? And it's because we were getting rainfall so often turf grasses didn't need any water. Mm. And so what happens is on a yearly basis, those root systems, they chase water. And so if you're sitting there and you're getting rainfall every other day, you're happy. You're right here in the first two inches. So you don't have any drought tolerance built in because you're not getting those deep rain, Mm -hmm. those deep roots. So it's a matter of weaning it off. And and I tell people too, you know, I've managed my lawn for 11 years until I sold my house. And I only water two to three times a year. And people, oh my God, no, you can't do that. I've got St. Augustine grass. It's it uses so much water. No, the problem is, is that the person with the the knob or the on and off switch is using too much water. It can actually withstand it. It's just how we manage it. Um, and a lot of things that what we're seeing right now is stress related type insect problems. Mm. Especially this time of year, it gets really hot. It's dry. The grass is already kind of stressed. So we have several things that come out. Um, environmental conditions bring in army worms and army worms are i think they're kind of cool but <laughs> you're, you're but a heart I'm, nerd I'm a too. Heart guy. so you know they're these little cool little worms mm-hmm. but they have an inverted y on the top of their head and they are very ferocious eaters i actually down in south texas saw one defoliate a mesquite tree overnight oh, wow. and i'm talking a large 30 foot circumference 40 foot tall mesquite tree defoliated it the only thing that was left were the little stems Mm -hmm. it it was it was kind of neat for me you know um but they're real quick they can defoliate things real fast and they're doing that with some lawns right now they're in there feeding and so when they get in there you got to make sure you get on top of them quick and bt what we were discovered you know talked about earlier Mm -hmm. is one option problem is is by the you know they may be gone by the time they get to it Mm -hmm. Um, the whole thing is if you see them and they're active you're going to have to use what they call a contact insecticide so that's those products like that have bifenthrin in them carbaryl permethrin and sphenvalerate those say lambda cyhalothrin those are all products that you can use or active ingredients you can use to control them by contact so if they're out there feeding and you see a whole bunch of them, try to get them quick because then they'll take most of the lawn. Okay, so you're gonna they're gonna have like a Y on their their mm-hmm. head, but about like how big are we talking? Are they? They are about uh, an inch to inch and a half length. Long, and mm-hmm. then how? Like are they like they skinny or are they like worms? Yeah, it depends. <laughs> if they've been eating a lot, uh, they're gonna be nice and fat. Okay, all right. <laughs> so they're about maybe a quarter of an inch in uh, width as okay. far as how big they are. And they, they kind of have a greenish color to them. They're not real hairy, unlike fall webworms. Fall webworms that are up in the trees right mm-hmm. now, they're actually white and hairy. Uh, and, and it's funny because there's so many different worms that can make tents. There's the other one is the, the eastern tent caterpillar, which we've seen earlier in the season. So now we're having just fall webworms, and they're typically very fuzzy and have more of a yellowish or whitish appearance to them. 
So these army worms mm-hmm. we're going to see like in the grass and on mm-hmm. the shrubs, mostly not really in trees. Not nece- not right. necessarily. Now okay. they may even they may even be up a tree and try to get a tree as well. So okay. you know uh, they're just kind of a ferocious feeder. Uh, if they're they're you know kind of right now we're kind of in I would say probably about mid season with them. Uh, once we get into later season, that's when they really start getting ferocious because they're trying to get to that moth stage. Mm-hmm. So they're eating a lot more so they can go in and do their thing. Oh, so in the when moth stage, are they de- do they eat then too? Or are they, 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 act, are they? Yeah, they actually feed but on other things at that point in time, okay. typically pollen or uh, typically um, n- none of them have chewing parts as far as that's concerned. So they're just they're, they're going to other host plants. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. All right, so army worms, and then you said chinch bugs were the other mm. thing that affects lawns a lot. Yes, especially when, like I said, anywhere that we've had a lot of stress, uh, when you've, you know, lack of water, excessive sunlight in an area, um, chinch bugs will come in. Um, it's with chinch bugs, they like the hottest, driest, sunniest spot in the whole lawn, and that's where they start. And you'll get just a, all of a sudden you'll get just a little dead spot, and the next day you go out and it's like two ice or three times the size, hmm. and the next day you go out it's even bigger. So they are, they're very quick and they're very active when they feed. Um, what they do, they actually have an enzyme that when they feed on the stolen uh, or on the on the grass, the runners, they inject that enzyme in there, and what it does it's kind of like gum. It clogs up the whole system, so it's like a stopped up toilet. Um, so <laughs> the grass system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. grass system. So it doesn't allow water and nutrients to really flow. So what happens? It immediately shuts down whatever's beyond where they or where it's flowing to. Mm-hmm. It shuts it down. So all of a sudden you have green grass, and I'm talking like a line, and then dead grass right on the other side, wow. and it'll be with the leaves and everything, dead grass, and then green grass on this side. So it's they're there. You know, um, the best thing to do is to inspect for them. Um, <laughs> One of the things that's hard to come by nowadays is an actual tin can that's a coffee can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and our old our old publications actually show the old tin coffee cans that you would cut out both sides and you would pound them into the ground. Of course, mm-hmm. all the ones we buy now are the, the plastic ones. So kind of hard to do that with that. <laughs> you smush it. Yeah, that makes, makes sense. <laughs> so a good, you know, nice size tin can, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it's a bean can or whatever else, you can take it and put it right on the edge of the dead into the green area and kind of pound it down into the ground. Mm-hmm. Okay. Make sure it's in the soil about maybe half an inch or so. And then take a good soapy water, maybe detergent uh, tide or cascade or something like that that's a powder detergent make us make a little bit of a soapy water solution fill that up about halfway on the ground you fill it up with that soapy water solution and those insects will actually come to the top and they'll float but they're also running around because you're irritating them (laughs) so you know that that's what we do we try to irritate the insects so the well because they're irritating us so we've got to make sure that we yeah you know so you've got to make sure that you know Oh, wow, those are, hmm, oh, look at those little guys running around. Um, I always say that one of them has an Acme bomb on it. You ever watch the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner yeah, show? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, well, yeah. The Bugs, they, one of the adult actually has an Acme bomb on on, on hmm. it. It's a brown or dark black, black insect, and it has a little white-shaped bomb on it. Okay. Uh, it's just their pattern on their back. And then some of them are like an orange and a cream striped uh, color with a little bit of brown, and some of them are just kind of brown with a stripe on them so there's several different i guess you know in stars or uh, life cycles they go through before they get to the adult stage Mm -hmm. so that's real good to do is test that and look for those insects and if you have them you got to treat them immediately okay so and that's to that's to identify them that's to make sure you have them yeah okay so then the next thing is the next thing is treat them with All them funky words I was talking you, about earlier. Okay, find, find something. Call call the yeah. master gardeners. Find out what it is mm-hmm. that you need. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about. Um, we'll kind of reiterate the the treatment of that, mm-hmm. and then we're going to talk. You know, we've talked a lot about problems and mm-hmm. and those darn bugs that cause us <laughs> issues, but um, we'll we'll talk just some some general tips for. Yep 
summer long management. Lung yeah. Until yeah. we get to the fall. Um, yep. So we'll do that as soon as we come back after this break. This is the Extension Hour where we talk about our people, our programs, our partnerships. And we've got Michael Potter with us today talking all about horticulture issues. And we'll be right back. Bell Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit, began in 2014 with a mission to strengthen the future of veterans through leadership and entrepreneurship training. We've invested over 1,400 hours of training in our veterans while connecting them with community entrepreneurs and leaders. Our mission is to continue investing in our veterans who have given so much for our country. Please join us in our mission by visiting vellinstitute.org. That's V-E-L institute.org. Do you want to know what's going on in Conroe? Tune in to Keeping Up With Conroe. Keeping Up With Conroe will highlight upcoming events and local businesses in the area. Keeping Up With Conroe will air the second Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. and will be hosted by the Conroe CVB staff. Keeping Up With Conroe will highlight Conroe's amazing attractions for residents and visitors. So tune in to Keeping Up With Conroe and join the staff of the Conroe CVB every month on Lone Star Community Radio. For more information about Keeping Up With Conroe and the Conroe CVB, go to visitconroe.com. Hey y'all, it's DJ Mike from Dan Simon, Texas. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. as I count down the top 10 Texas Red Dirt songs that are packing the dance floor. I'll be featuring local artists and the story behind the hits, shows in the area, as well as new songs that make you want to dance. It's Dance Time in Texas with DJ Mike on Lone Star Community Radio 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC, Conroe, Texas, or online, IRLoneStar.com. Extension Hour. I'm Amy Wrestler. We're talking with Michael Potter. We're talking about trees and lawns and bugs. I get to tell you a funny side story, right? So 4-H is part of our what we do in Extension. And um, early in my career, I had gone to a, um, I had an exchange trip. So we had gone to Iowa and then they came to visit us. Or actually, they came to visit us first. I don't know. I was telling them something about the place where I live. So this was like up in kind of the panhandle. So I lived in Hale, Hale County mm-hmm. at the time, just north of Lubbock. And um, I was... Probably, I probably still have a pretty thick accent, more than I like to admit. But I was telling him something about, yeah, it's nice, except for the dirt and bugs. <laughs> and I was saying the dirt and the bugs that are there. And they heard the dirt and bu- the dart and bugs. They dart thought I was bugs. saying, I'm talking about these bugs that were darting. And they had this, like, vision of, of all these dart and bugs. And we're talking about chinch bugs. It makes me think of dart and bugs. Dart and bugs. Dart and bugs. Chinchy bugs. Uh, but the dirt, mm-hmm. or the soil, as we like to say. So it's really the soil, the health of the soil. Mm-hmm. We had talked, um, before we went to break, we were talking about the chinch bugs. and the. Um, so you had mentioned you'll have, like, dead grass green mm-hmm. grass and there'll be kind of a, a pre-marked defined. line so that's mm-hmm. one of the ways that you tell right yeah it's then a really do, defined line you do the little trick that you talked about with the coffee can mm-hmm. or the tin can figure out okay i've Soapy got water i've yep. got chinch bugs mm-hmm. now what do i do Ooh, yeah if you got chinch bugs now what we've got to do is, is find a good treatment and the whole thing is with chinch bugs there's no passive way to uh to treat for them you have to use a contact type insecticide and that's something it's almost like a drench almost that you're gonna have to put a lot of it out just to make sure you treat them appropriately so typically you have the dead side and green side that are side by side and what you have to realize is that they are already in the green side Mm. they're already there feeding they're not in the dead side anymore so when you're looking for them if you look for them in the dead part you're not going to find them because there's nothing there for them to eat yeah they're done they're like "Mm -mm, we're moving on dude we're in the green stuff here so they're moving to the green just like we all have to move to green to make money all right so (laughs) take the insulin valerate or bifenthrin or cyfluthrin any of those types of products uh permethrin um, uh, lambda cyhalothrin, those are all good active ingredients to use to treat. Um, the best treatments are going to be your liquid formulations. Um, they have hose in sprayers now. Basically, you can go into the store, buy this little bottle, stick it on the end of your hose, and go after it. You don't have to mix a product anymore. So, a lot of them already have a pre made, what they call RTU, ready to use product. Okay. Okay. And so, like I said, bifenthrin, cyfluthrin, permethrin, lambda cyhalothrin, those are good products to use to treat chinch bugs. All right. So once that, that 
dead spots there, right? Mm-hmm. Is it going to come back green? It will eventually. What the problem is, is that they've already done their deed. They have basically cut off everything that's on that dead side. It's not going to grow back. What you're going to see is eventually the grass that's near it is going to start sprouting back out and having to run back in that area to fill in. So more than likely what's going to have to happen, you're just going to have to let it take it, run its course, maybe rake out the dead leaves, you know, in a, like a month or two after it happens, just to allow some more sunlight and aeration through there, mm-hmm. just to get that r- grass to run through there. But so, that's the only way you can really mess with it. <laughs> kind of like the other things we were talking about mm-hmm. with the trees. Right. So you just have to be patient yep. and... Just it's, deal with the ugly for a while. And see, that's the thing. A lot of people are so impatient. Mm. The first thing they see, you know, oh, my grass isn't doing well. Oh, throw some fertilizer on it. Okay. Oh, I, I must have chinch bugs. They throw something else on it. Oh, it's a fungus. Let me throw this on it. Mm-hmm. So now they've just wasted about $100 in product when they could have just called us. We go through a quick little, hey, what you got? Bring me a sample of turf grass if need be. Now we know what you have. So now I just saved you 75 bucks. Nice. So that's what we do. That's what we try to do. It, and, and we make it easy. You know, we're ex- an extension and we're not here to sell a product. We're here to give, you know, research-based information and help people. And saving money is one of those. Right. And water and resources. So water is one of those things. And a lot of what we also teach is preventative mm-hmm. maintenance. And, you know, right. so whether it's health or whether mm-hmm. it's uh, gardening. That's right. Um, you know, just uh, doing things doing things right to begin with right. can help prevent mm-hmm. problems down the road. If so. I only would have known that dove hunting in Mexico caused ear problems, I probably <laughs> would have worn two sets of earplugs. Uh, what? So yeah. Prefer- <laughs> huh? Excuse me. <laughs> it means you can't uh, yeah, hear very what? well sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I can't hear things. So, um, but yeah, it's, if I would have done the things then I mm-hmm. wouldn't be dealing with it now. Okay. So, so let's talk about yeah. watering, just taking care of your lawn. Let's start yeah. with the lawn. And, and it goes with it, yeah, it, everything. It goes with everything okay. you have. If you water appropriately, your plants will just be happier. If you overdo it, they're not going to be happy. They're going to get stressed out. So typically with your trees, your shrubs, and your turf grass, there's kind of a general recommendation of about one inch of water or a deep watering. Okay, we'll go with turf. One inch of water per week. Turf so, is grass. Turf is grass. Turf <laughs> grass. All right. So one inch of water per week. How, how much is that on your irrigation system? Crickets. Crickets. Okay. So every irrigation system is different. We all have different size piping. We all have different pressure in different neighborhoods. Uh, sometimes it's the number of, of actual spray heads in your system. So you have to do an irrigation audit. And if you send the Master Gardeners an email, and we can, re- we can actually request that information, I have a little cheat sheet. I've also uh, put them in the Conroe Courier as far as my news columns on how to do an irrigation audit. So that's one of the things. If you water appropriately, it'll lessen the stress of that turf grass. And so it can actually resist funguses and insect pressures. You know, it's when they're, you know, I think I started earlier, when it's hot, dry, and the, right next to concrete, that's where the chinch bugs like it. Mm. Because why? That's where the grass is stressed the most. So if you're watering appropriately and you're keeping that ground cool and that grass is happy, then you won't have that issue. Or if you do, it'll be very, very minor as opposed to taking a lot of it. So the preventative maintenance is very important, especially with trees and shrubs as well. Right. So you, and you're talking about um, irrigation, so watering and whether you've got an irrigation system mm-hmm. or you literally yep. just using the mm-hmm. hose. Like so I've always done. <laughs> Um, but also it's like monitoring the rainfall, right? So mm-hmm. that's one of the reasons why to pay attention to how much it's yeah. raining. So um, at the office yesterday, we had a rainstorm. <laughs> All the electricity goes out. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm talking to Potter about some, I don't know, what are we, what are we going to do with the electricity <laughs> out? And he's like looking out the window or looking out the door. I wonder, I bet that's half an inch of rain. He just walks off to go check the rain instead of having the conversation with me. But anyway, so paying attention to the rainfall, right? So right. Talk, let's talk a little bit about how to do that and what to look for. So let's say one inch of water per week. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a gentleman come in today, for example. I said, how much, how much do you water? He said, three times a week. I was like, okay, do you have sandy soil or do you have like a clayish type soil? He's like, well, it's a clayish type soil, just your normal soil around here. And I was like, okay, you need to water twice a week, not three times a week. So he's watering too often. If he would spread it out, and, and I, he has his his homework today is to go home and figure out how much he's actually watering, because he may be providing an inch of rain over that week. But what he needs to do is he needs to do that 
break it up into two watering events. What that'll do is that'll allow for that water, I mean, the, excuse me, the root system to chase that water as it goes down. You have to allow the soil to dry out because it has to replenish oxygen and it has to allow those root systems to travel down to chase it. Um, the other thing that happens is your actual mowing process in the spring should be starting a little low, not scalping, but starting low and working your way to the highest of about four inches during the heat of the summer like right now. Hmm. The more leaf blade you have, the more root system you have because it has to support that leaf. So if it's a big, long leaf, a tall leaf, then it has to have the root system to support it. Of course, there's not much we can do with Mother Nature, though. Right. And if we have wheat rainfall every week, you know, twice a week or whatever, that's going to cause some problems because there's no amount of dry time in between. So what you have to do is just monitor the rainfall. You know, if you got quarter of an inch at the beginning of the week, you might have to just put in, you know, three quarters of an inch towards the end of the week or something like that just to get you through. I can't tell you how many times that, you know, I don't have an irrigation system at my house. I have to drag out the sprinkler and water and try to get my one inch of water per week. And a couple of times I did not check the weather. Mm -hmm. And the next day it rains. And I just went, wow, I just wasted money Mm -hmm. because I just watered the lawn and I didn't need to. I needed to monitor. And sometimes that happens with Mm -hmm. irrigation systems, right? Because you can put them on just uh, automatic and... Set it and forget it, right? Kind of like a crock pot or something (laughs) like that, you know? (laughs) Set it and forget it. Well, that's what we don't want to do. We want to learn the fact that, okay, uh, it's going to rain here tomorrow. Here's the off button. You know, some people actually just... And that's what they do now. They just leave them off. The people that I have trained through some of the classes that we've done at the office and stuff, they leave it off. And then when they need it, they turn it on and they run the cycle. And that's all they need to do. So if I'm hearing you right, you're mm-hmm. talking monitor mm-hmm. and mow. Monitor and mow. That's it. And then you probably have a healthy lawn. And the funny thing is, is if you mow often enough and, and through through your normal mowing and you don't, there's a, there's a method we, which you call the one-third rule. Never mow more than one-third of the leaf blade because okay. that that's called scalping. Okay. So if you mow too much of that leaf blade out, you're going to stress the grass. But if you mon- mow properly you're actually going to do something that a lot of people don't think about. You're actually going to decrease the amount of weeds that you have because weeds have to produce seeds to reproduce. Right. If you're consistently mowing, they never have a chance to produce weed, weed heads, the seed yeah. heads. So there you're you actually go. doing a passive way of weed control. All right. So any other tips for just good mm-hmm. management on Yes. Yeah. Hydrate yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I know you were talking about water earlier, and I was like, I'm kind of thirsty. I'm kind of thirsty. Yeah. This time of the year, you know, we're 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 kind of in survival mode. We've got really, you know, pretty decent heat. A couple of scattered showers here and there, just depending on where you are. So watering may be something that you're going to have to do. Um, a lot of people try to do a midsummer feeding or something like that. We don't recommend that. Uh, we want to wait until at least you know or mid-September to do any kind of feeding, early to mid-September, with a slow-release type fertilizer, not anything really heavy, nitrogen or anything like that. Uh, it's just going to help the grass kind of recover from all the stress that it has incurred mm-hmm. since the freeze. Um, and, and that way, you know, you've got some good nutrient availability there for you getting up into the fall until we start to shut down probably late October, mid to late October. All right. So we have had some really good conversation about trees and lawns and water. Um, So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to kind of sum it all up. We're going to do Michael Potter's top Top 10 10 for (laughs) horticulture management. Um, We'll be, we'll do that after we take a little bit of a break. This is the extension hour, people, programs, partnerships, Michael Potter, all rolled up into one, all those people, program partnerships. This is, um, we're on Lone Star Radio, 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. And we're on YouTube, so you can go back and watch this too, Mm because sometimes it's like, what did they say? Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be back right after this. God's Garage is a 501c3 that repairs and gives away cars for free to single moms, widows, and wives of deployed military. You can help God's Garage by donating a vehicle, volunteering your time, or by monetary donation. God's Garage is located at 2106 East Davis, Conroe. If you'd like to learn more about God's Garage, visit our website at godsgarage.org. Or you can contact us, and we would be glad to come and make a presentation to your group. We have the safest food supply in the world. Strict laws and regulations restrict the usage of hormones, antibiotics, 
and pesticides within our food supply. Production agriculture practices and technologies such as the use of GMOs, which is not any more or less risky than conventional crop production, has allowed American farmers to produce more food on less acres in environmentally sound ways. Find out more online at pathtoplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make lives better. Second Saturday Divorce Workshop provides unbiased information to help you understand your options and move forward with your life. This divorce workshop is for you if you are contemplating divorce, in the process of divorce, already filed for divorce, or post-divorce. You will explore the emotional, legal, and financial aspects of divorce from professionals who have guided others through divorce. For more information on this divorce workshop, contact SecondSaturdayWoodlands.com or call 832-375-0900. Hour. People, Programs, Partnerships, and Potter, Michael Potter. We've got him. Um, he's our horticulture agent. We've had some great conversation about trees. And um, so what we like to do kind of in the last segment is a little bit of maybe like top 10 things of all everything that we've you know talked about in this mm. show. So things that you want people to remember. So you want to start at the bottom? You want to go 10 to 1? Or yeah, one to 10, 10 to 1, 1 to all 10. Right. Right. 10. Um, let's say 10. I'm going to have to put my glasses oh. on because my ra- <laughs> It's, it's okay. It's part of aging. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, happens. we can do that. All right. Use extension as a resource. Ah, good, mm-hmm. good one. There yes. you go. For all uh, kinds of stuff. Yes. Which, while well, we're talking about that, right? So let's mm-hmm. talk about some more places to find information, right? So right. use extension for a resource. Master Gardeners have a web page. They mm-hmm. have an active Facebook. Mm-hmm. They do plant sales. They do in-person classes. Mm-hmm. They do online classes. Right. Um, and you do a news article yep. in the Conroe Courier every every week. Every week, <laughs> yes, a weekly news column. Yes, that the good place. MCMGA.com is the website, and then just you can look them up on Facebook. Right. So you said Montgomery. that kind of fast. MCMGA.com. So Master, uh, Montgomery County, County Master, Master Gardener, Gardener Association. Association. .com. Yep. Okay. We did it in we, stereo. I know. That was, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. And then so whenever you want to ask certain questions and maybe it's late at night and our phone room is not open or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. you can always go in and do a Google search and always say, oh, let's see, lawn control uh, or control of chinch bugs <laughs> and type in a dot T-A-M-U at the end of it. And that'll get you to a lot of the A and M, you know, research-based extension publications. Okay. Okay. Another place to look for information, since we were talking about turf, uh, was the agiturf.tamu.edu. Okay, that's everything turf grass. When I say turf, I'm not talking about the fake stuff. So <laughs> that that has its problems too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That actually, it's funny that I went to a turf conference and they make sure that their presenters say turf grass, not turf. Huh. Turf is referring to fake turf, fake turf grass. Right, like so, a football yeah, field. Yeah, so turf grass. Okay. I have to catch myself. All yeah. right, so another option to find information, especially about gardening or other horticulture information, is aggiehort.tamu.edu. That's another great website for all kinds of other information. There's stuff on there in fruit and nuts, citrus care. they got all kinds of fruit that you didn't even realize that we <laughs> could grow in there. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff in there, and you can just do a search from there. Okay, so my number six was don't fertilize in the heat. That's one of the things that you don't want to do. It's just going to stress the grass out. Uh, you can even, if you, especially if you overdo it and you don't actually do a soil test, because mm-hmm. a soil test is very important in order to know what exactly the lawn needs. So if you don't do a soil test and you just go throw stuff out there, you really don't know where you are. So always get a soil test performed, which you can come by the office, pick up a soil sample kit, which is a uh, form and a bag, or you can also go to the soiltesting.tamu.edu website. It's amazing how we have some of these things memorized. Right. <laughs> Say it once or twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, on the soiltesting.tamu.edu site, you can actually go down to the bottom and select forms. You can print out the actual form that we would give you if you came into the office. But instead of using one of the soil test bags, you would actually use like a quart uh, zip bag or something like that. To put the soil in. Point of clarification: You say don't fertilize in the heat. That's so heat right. is relative. Heat <laughs> is relative. That's true. Like what, Arizona what, what heat, of, I've uh, been there. So yeah, that's really hot. Uh, once temperatures get up above ninety degrees, okay. we really don't want to sort fertilize in. Uh, actually, excuse me. Let me go back and say: once they get up about ninety-five plus degrees, 
what happens is turf grass shuts down. They cl start to close stomata up. They don't want to grow because it's actually too hot for them. So, and most plants are that way. So we want to make sure that when it gets excessively above 95 degrees that we're not fertilizing. Okay. And, and also you don't want to do it when you have lawns, especially with lawns that have take all root rot or any kind of fungal issues like gray leaf spot, which is a whole nother segment if we wanted <laughs> to go there. Uh, okay. So that was my number six. Number five, monitor your rainfall. Okay. okay. Uh, number even if someone's talking to you. Even if, yeah. yeah just go, go, go check that rain. <laughs> I'll how never let that one down. Yeah. I was like, oh, squirrel. Yeah. Let me go chase that one. <laughs> What's the rainfall like? And then, by the way, the electricity was out. I'll, yeah. 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 So yeah. I like, couldn't even I'll read be... the rainfall bill. Oh. Wait, what were we using to read it? <laughs> the, uh, in my office, I actually have a little oh, yeah. sensor. Yeah. And it's you couldn't it, read it because you couldn't see in the yeah, dark? Yeah, it, is no, that what you're saying? No, no. It was dead. It's like electric? Yeah, it's a little, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Ran off the electricity, so I changed the battery real quick, and it popped up, and we had a quarter of an inch uh, of rain. <laughs> something, so, but, but, so let's talk just a quick yeah. segue or back uh, into measuring rainfall, right? So mm -hmm. I remember my dad, my granddad, having like the little thing Plastic. on the fence, right? Mm -hmm. So those work yes. well, but you sound like you have a fancy. <laughs> yes. Um, in fact, there was a... I, one of our master gardeners had was given a weather station oh. from it's like an ambient or ambient.com or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a weather station. So they, he said, you know, I really don't have use for it. I can't put it at my place because I have too many trees. It doesn't work well. So they put it out at the extension office. And so there's a little <laughs> module that's in my office and you can actually go to ambient.com and you can look up the Master Gardener site and you can tell what oh. temperature it is, what rainfall we've had, everything. So it's right there. And you can also do that through NOAA and some of the other the weather services. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of neat. And they, they put the module in my office. So I get to monitor, you know, UV indexes and all this other cool stuff. So <laughs> they always give me toys to play with. So, all right, so monitor, <laughs> monitor rainfall and don't add water when you've got sufficient rainfall, right? That's correct. Okay. Perfect. That was number five. Yeah. Do you do that? Do you follow I, these I, rules? I, I, I don't <laughs> don't want, worry, I don't need. I don't water. I don't even all. have a yard right now. <laughs> no, no. I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's like just just do what we say, not as we do. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, you're the horticulture agent. Yeah. I, yeah. Of course, well, I don't always eat well it's either. The so. plumber theory yeah. or the electrician's theory. You don't ever go to their house and expect their plumbing or electric to be perfect. There you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Uh, so my number four was wait on trimming trees, even though they may look nasty or kind of not healthy at this point in time. Let's let them go. Let's see what they do when they refresh themselves in the spring. Um, don't trim them right now unless they're completely dead. Okay. Okay. Number three, water appropriately. And that goes for watering your trees as well. Because especially during the hot months like this, when we don't have a lot of moisture down low, down deep, sometimes it may be okay to go out and let's say water deeply underneath those trees. And when I say deeply, I mean apply water slowly, big drops for a period, a long period of time. That way that water can soak down and get to those root systems. Okay. Okay. My number two, mow appropriately. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's part of the deal. We don't want to scalp our lawns. Uh, I have a different method of doing things because we do have in the fall, we have take all, I mean, how I get them all confused sometimes. We have brown patch, AKA now called large patch. We're still trying to find small patch and medium patch. So um, there was some research that was done and what they did is they, they, they changed the name of brown patch because brown patch is actually Two different strains of Rhizoctonia. One affects cool season grasses. One affects warm season grasses. But we have both anyway, so they called it large patch. Okay. So large patch happens once we get into October when the temperatures cool below about 65 degrees or right at 65 degrees at night. And then we have moisture, humidity, cool night. Oop, then also we have these golden rings in our lawn. So one way to do that and to alleviate that is to start probably around the end of this month, start to lower your mower a notch. The next time you mow, just go a little bit further, you know, another notch. And, and with basically that one third rule, okay? But just keep getting it lower. And what that'll do is that when we get to the October time frame, that you'll have more airflow through your lawn so you won't have the environment for that fungus to take over. And then of course, don't fertilize too close to that toll front because if you throw fertilizer on fungus, then it's like gasoline on fire. So it's kind of a 
it's kind of a short one, but a long one that's very descriptive okay. as far as mow appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> and the last thing, water your lawns appropriately. Once we get to the point that we're past the summer heat, you know, and you're watering once in one inch a week, when we get to October, it's just time to turn it off. Uh, I did have a gentleman come in this last year that lives down in the woodlands. He, uh, we've talked several years ago. He was having water bills in excess of $300. Wow. And kept telling me that I didn't know what I was talking about, in a sense, about watering. And I said, no. I said, you've got to treat this as a long-term solution. It's not the grass's fault that you're watering. You keep thinking that the grass needs water. Don't do it. So we got him on a schedule. He came back here this last year after, you know, two years of being away. Came in and said, hey, I just want to stop by and talk to you and see how you're doing. I got a little bit of an issue. And it wasn't even that. It was a weed in another part of the yard, not even related to his turf. His water bills are less than $120 a month now. Wow, nice. So good savings to him. It's something that's, you know, one of those things that makes me feel good. Yeah, I did one thing right. Um, I saved this man about $200 a month. So that's that's rewarding for us mm -hmm. as far as what we do. I know it is for you as well when you save people money and oh, their yeah. health. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. And it's always cool when mm -hmm. people recognize that. <laughs> yep. That's All right. right. So um, we talked a little bit about the Master Gardeners. They have a plant sale. Mm -hmm. They have um, classes. Yes. So the next plant sale will be in the fall, right? The next plant sale, I th we're doing it in October. Okay. And so just watch the Master Gardener website and Facebook. Uh, it's going to be more of a open garden day slash plant sale. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing some herbs and vegetables. And we're also going <laughs> to open up our office. And if you ever have had the chance, folks... Come to our office. We have a heck of a garden out there. Uh, we've got vegetables. We've got fruit trees. We've got turf. We've got earth kind demonstrations, herb gardens, aquaponics. We've got the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. It's like a mini botanical garden. And, and during the plant sales and the <laughs> yes. open garden days, there's people mm -hmm. there that can tell you all about mm -hmm. what those are. So, mm -hmm. um, and you can you can just come by and look. Yes. Often and, there's someone there who yeah. can show you around. Mm -hmm. So our address is 9020 Airport Road, 9020 Airport Road, mm -hmm. right across the street from the Lone Star Convention Center, right. if you're familiar with that. So 3083, mm -hmm. 336, it's right there where those kind of meet, mm -hmm. um, right next to the airport. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, right behind them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we hear the helicopters yes. a lot. <laughs> but uh, that's a whole different story. Y yes. Um, so uh, phone number? Emails one more time. 936-539-7824-22 or 25. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, for the Master Gardeners, uh, their email is mcmga9020 at gmail.com. Or you can find them, of course, at mcmga.com is the Muskegon County Master Gardener website. Yeah. So it's been great to have you today, Thank Michael. You. Thank, Thank you for having so me. Much. Yeah, and and sometimes our the master gardeners they come in pretty often. Mm -hmm. so, so you're very entertaining, but sometimes they're even more entertaining. Oh yes, <laughs> just gotta say. Oh yes, <laughs> we mm. love our master gardeners. Oh yes. Um. So yeah, because there are people they do some of our programs, uh, partnerships, and that's what this show is about: the yes. Extension mm -hmm. Hour, people programs, partnerships, where we try to help Texans thrive, help mm -hmm. our. Um, landscapes thrive, mm -hmm. help just make lives better. Water, yeah, yeah all for that stuff. sure. <laughs> all right, so we'll be back next time to talk more about new and different things um, related to extension. So you never know; it could be about plants, it could be about animals, it could be about mental health, it could be about food, it could be about floods. We don't yeah. know. <laughs> whatever comes up, <laughs> whatever we'll comes up, we'll talk about it. Yeah. All right. So thanks for joining us. Thank thanks you. again, Mike, Thank for you. being here, Appreciate and we'll it. see you next time on the Extension Hour. See ya.